the next um, presentation is um, about exploring the effects of um, Pokemon Go, Go uh, vandalism on OSM. And it's being presented by Tessio Novak. Please, we have 20 minutes. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm a postdoc researcher here at GDS Science uh, Institute, so uh, welcome to Heidelberg from my part, as this is my current living town. Um, participating in this work together with um, three researchers from different universities in Florida. Uh, the first author being Levente Juhas. He is um, part of the um, organizing committee of the academic track. And it's my pleasure and honor to be here and present this work. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, Vendelis, Pokemon, and OSM and how those things uh, related more or less. Uh, so this is my outline for today, pretty standard. I'll start with an introduction. then. Uh, methodology results, and then I'll wrap it up with summary and future work. And um, I'll start by saying a few words about Pokemon and how it relates both to constructive mapping and vandalism in OSM. Then I'll present the goal of our work and then move on to the methodology and so on. So, yeah, Pokemon is an augmented reality uh, mobile game. You play with your uh, smartphone. And the goal is to local, um, um, locate and capture those uh, virtual creatures, those, those virtual flying monsters. And um, by playing it, you are required to go to different places uh, in the map and collect points, uh, capture those um, creatures there. Uh, you can also interact with other players. And so it's a really interactive game, uh, both with the environment and with, with other people. Uh, and the thing is that it has a really high popularity even today. At its peak of popularity in 2016, it had um, almost 30 million different users playing it every day. And still today, there are roughly 10 million uh, people playing it. And what you see in this picture there is a so-called gym. I think it's where people uh, get together to battle against uh, stronger Pokemons and, extra, and also to exchange points. and. Uh, do all sorts of uh, interactions uh, um, in the game. And I really wouldn't have anything against, against it, except that there's one so-called jeans uh, right beside my office. I took this picture on Wednesday. And uh, it's ironic, because they were really disturbing me as I was trying to prepare <laughs> this presentation. Uh, and uh, But there are not just. Um, negative uh, aspects from the game. There are also a lot of uh, positive ones as well. So uh, there are plenty of evidence that um, Pokemon playing is associated with outdoor activity, so with physical activity. It also is known to increase uh, local businesses, because after all, these people are buying something to drink or whatever as they play. And um, it turned out that um, it turns out that it actually inspire uh, different citizen science projects, right? So I brought this article here from Nature where um, it says that scientists are urging Pokemon players to keep an eye on potential new uh, species and just thus um, maybe transforming uh, existing taxonomies. And another very representative example is uh, photo, uh, photo, photo Quest Go, um, which is a citizen science uh, project and application for collecting land use and land cover data. And it has a uh, gamification and community principles just as uh, Pokemon Go has. Uh, so um, OSM is the background map from, from Pokemon and um, the players uh, discovered that um, Spawn points, these are where points where Pokemon creatures appear, are influenced by uh, certain features of the map. So they started uh, big communication in specialized forums, as you see on the left hand side, and um, also dedicated websites for, uh, for gaming. Um, sometimes post articles with instructions on how to map in OSM. So, Potentially, there's a new community of constructive mappers uh, that, can, that can come from, from, from Pokemon players. Because the idea is that uh, by inserting, non uh, by inserting uh, features on the map that influence the appearance of those, those creatures, they will both 
contribute to the map as well as get advantage by collecting the appearing creatures that will appear on these features that they're inserting. Um, as I said, I mean, the, the OSM community seems to welcome this uh, 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 potential large mass of new mappers. Uh, this is attested by uh, a page from OSM Wiki where it says, well, there's a flurry of new mapping editing activity coming from Pokemon. Uh, the players have discovered that there's an association of Pokemon appearance and certain features on the map. And it also instructs mappers or uh, <coughs> players, I should say, um, to map correctly and not insert in existing things just to get advantage uh, in the game. So, um, but unfortunately, there is not just constructive mapping um, emerging from Pokemon players, but also vandalism, right? This is the uh, topic of my, my talk here today. What you see in this picture is a very extreme example because uh, footpaths are especially uh, associated with those uh, spawn points where Pokemon creatures appear, and this user inserted, I don't know, uh, hundreds of footpaths in, in what is a park area, vegetated area, just to get advantage from it. Um, and also, certain Pokemon creatures are associated to land use types. For instance, there are certain monsters or creatures that appear uh, in lakes, so people will map swimming pools as lakes, uh, they might map um, a forest as a park just so that these creatures will appear there and they uh, will be able to collect them. So this is the underlying cause of um, Pokemon-related vandalism in OSM. Um, of course, uh, vandalism is an is a important topic because it kind of undermines the reputation of OSM. I uh, brought this example where uh, a vandal actually changed the name of New York to Geotropolis, and uh, somehow um, map services that are based on, on Mapbox um, um, showed the map with, instead of the name New York, Geotropolis, and that looks really bad to our images, so we should definitely uh, put efforts in avoiding certain situations. And um, so vandalism protection is, is an important thing, especially because according to Linus law, um, any type of vandalism or bugs will eventually be corrected, but it's unlikely that all harmful edits will be detected, uh, at least in a short period of time. So there is some um, related work on, on vandalism in, in OSM. The OSM uh, wiki, for instance, provides um, tools for reverting uh, suspicious uh, editing and also provides guidelines on how to manage uh, vandalism. And it also um, provides a few suggestions on how to detect uh, um, vandalism, but these are mostly very simple rule-based uh, strategies and, and that not always work. Right? So, and this takes into consideration, for instance, very long tag names or very new users that produce a lot of edits in a short period of time or change sets with a very large number of edits. So these are hints that uh, these are probably uh, change sets that are disrupting the, the map, right? Uh, in academic literature, there's also um, a few papers on that. Uh, the, the paper from Pascal Nice continues to be a reference from my perspective. Uh, we'll not get much into that because uh, uh, time limitation here. So I'll move on to the goal of the work, which was uh, really to undertake some first uh, exploratory analysis on what we say is the nature and life cycle of um, Pokemon Go related vandalism, but also to focus on how the OSM community respond to, to such cases of vandalism. So, Going on to the methodology, uh, what we did, we used the uh, chain set uh, dump to get all the existing chain sets uh, made until now, and we applied this uh, search string on it. So what you see here 
Uh, so Pokemon, Pokemon, Poke are stems, and, um, and, and on the other side of the end operator you see three verbs, and because these are stems, uh, regardless of the verb tense um, of these verbs in the comments of the chain sets, we will get those chain sets as, as our data. So I'll demonstrate how it works. So we apply this um, search string in, in all chain sets, and uh, then uh, we will collect a, a few chain sets. So this, this would be one case. So there's a comment there that says reverted chain set, blah, blah, and parts of chain set, blah, blah, because of Pokemon Vanillis. So it contains the stems we are, we are using in our search screen. And uh, then we look for eight digits uh, um, integers in those comments to detect the chain sets that are being fixed or corrected, reverted, as you wish to call it, right? So in this case, we would collect then those two chain sets. Uh, so we have then both the, the fixed chain sets and the vandalism ones. Uh, another approach that we applied, uh, in case there was no indication of the chain sets that were being corrected at the comments, we took a look at the previous versions of all the, the edits that were made. And in the case that all those edits came from a single chain set, then uh, we used that as well in our, uh, in our analysis. So in case those edits are coming from different chain sets, then there were no way to, to know which one was from vandalism, which one was uh, another type of valid chain set. So we discarded those cases altogether. So what we have now then, is uh, um, a large group of chain sets categorized into vandalism, fixes, and we have the respective users or creator of the chain sets, which we also tag as vandals and fixers. Uh, so this is our database, actually. So we got pretty much all data that you can get with the main API from the chain sets, from the users, and from the edits. So from the chain sets, as I said, we categorize them into fix and vandalism. We also uh, save the timestamp, uh, the user ID, tags, number of changes, etc. We created a network connecting fixing um, chain sets to vandalism chain sets, and that allows us, among other things, to uh, calculate the time difference between uh, vandalism act and uh, its respective repair. Uh, from the users, uh, we categorize them as vandals and fixers, as I said. We collect also the age, which is the time uh, since the creation of the account in OSM. Also computed the number of chain sets those user creators, number of edits, and so on. And uh, from the edits, um, we uh, categorize them into creation, modification, and deletion. And uh, we are currently working on um, um, saying what type of feature is being added. And for that, we are using this uh, JOSM presets. But this is, is ongoing work, which will allow us to assess what, uh, what features are the object of, of uh, vandalism in, in OSM. So uh, as I said, uh, we categorize the users into vandals and fixers. but. Uh, it turns out that things are a little bit more complex than that. So you see in this case here, the same user appears at, at vandalism at first on the left-hand side. And he's not really a beginner because he has already uh, 90 chain sets edited. And then uh, nine chain sets after that, he or she um, was actually detected as correcting uh, another chain set. So uh, this is probably a case of someone that acted at least in some occasion as a vandal, then turn out to be actually uh, someone that's, uh, uh, um, well, five minutes, yeah, better rush, that's um, correct in those, those cases. So going on to the results here, so what you see on the first two graphs above are the first one is the monthly number of, of chain sets identified as vandalism in orange and fixes um, thereof. And on the middle, uh, this is the number of uh, monthly users engaged in vandalism and fixes. So uh, it's very interesting to see those peaks here in the, in the um, time axis. And we assume this is related somewhat to map updates from, from, from Pokemon. So every time uh, the map gets updated, some of the vandalism acts get uh, um, 
deleted they get, because they get corrected by the community, so that triggers um, um, vandals to act in vandalism again so that they get advantage once again um, in the game. And the last graph here shows that this is the cumulative number of users engaged in vandalism and fixes, and so the number of people fixing it uh, stays um, uh, relatively steady here, meaning that these are the same people actually uh, engaging in correcting the cases, whereas the cases of vandalism, uh, the number of users in, engaged in vandalism tends to grow with time. So this is a graph showing uh, the number of vandalism chain sets by the uh, time taken to um, correct them in hours. So most cases get corrected actually in the first few hours, but there are cases that take a long time to be corrected. And, uh, but 50% uh, is corrected in less than eight hours, and average uh, time is 90 days, and, and, and two, out of three time, uh, two out of three of those chain sets are fixed within one day. So uh, you see the, the lines here are um, kernel density estimations, the gray areas are the uh, confidence of interval, and uh, the green area stands for um, the um, average time take to fix the vandalism chain sets, and the orange line stands for the vandalized uh, chain sets. So there is an inverse relationship here, meaning that at times where you have lots of cases of vandalism, the community is fixing those really, really quickly, whereas when you have little uh, cases uh, or few cases, then the community is mostly focusing on correcting um, older uh, um, cases of vandalism. Um, these two graphs here show a correlation of time and, uh, and time to take, time taken to correct the vandalism acts. So here in this case, you have single cases of, of vandalism and, uh, and how, how much time it took them, the community to correct them. And this is the decreasing line, so there's a, a negative correlation here, and this is statistically significant, which allows us to say that uh, the time taken to discover those and fix those vandalism acts are, is actually decreasing. Same thing on the right-hand side here. This is average by month, and again, it's a negative correlation, and it's statistically significant. So uh, this is the amount of users engaging in, in, in vandalism in time. So most of them are first-time vandals, uh, whereas on the right-hand side you have the number of uh, people correcting it, and most of them are returning users. So they are, these are the same guys that corrected vandalism before that continue to act as fixers of vandalism cases. So as I showed before, the number of vandals is constantly increasing, whereas the number of uh, users correcting it, it's uh, steady. Uh, vandals are usually uh, very young uh, uh, users, so 50% um, of them have created their accounts in less than 35 minutes before they engaged in disruptive editing, where our fixers uh, are there for five years, more or less. So you see that on the distributions here, so the distribution of the fixers is much more uh, um, yeah, distributed, much more even, whereas this one is much tailored. Okay, just a second. So uh, this regards the editor uh, software users. So vendors are um, editing using mostly their ID, so the most standard way, whereas fixers are using more sophisticated tools, which demonstrate that they are more experienced and know how to handle those tools to fix uh, vandalism cases. Uh, we also inspected um, discussions between vendors and fixers, so um, uh, there are cases where there's pretty constructive and civilized discussion, which indicates that some vendors are actually transformed into constructive mappers after they get approached by the community. So uh, going on to the summary and future work then, um, um, wrapping it up then, uh, let's like say the OSM community seems to be getting better at discovering vandalism. Vandalism is not sustained by the same, um, by the same users, but always from different ones. Fixes are sustained by a dedicated and small community. And communication is helpful, and um, uh, we are now working towards uh, a detection mechanism to to identify vandalism cases in an automatic way in a uh, 
very time effective way. So um, for future work, we intend to uh, consider and explore other metrics, uh, as I said, to formalize a binary classifier uh, for detecting vandalism and then to um, extend our findings to other cases of vandalism and not just Pokemon Go. Yeah, that was a short time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have about uh, three minutes for question time, and then afterwards there's going to be an exchange of, uh, if, uh, of um, uh, sessions. So we have two mics, one is there, so just raise your hand and then we bring the mic. Thanks, that was really interesting. Um, it looks like there were two big spikes in the vandalism. Do you know what those big spikes correspond to? Yeah, as I said, um, that's a very good question. Uh, I'm not able to provide a definitive answer, but I think they are related to uh, updates made by Niantic, is the company that runs Pokemon Go, so every time it updates the map um, because the vandalism acts get corrected by the community so they disappear from the Pokemon Go map. I assume that uh, vandals engage in vandalizing again so that they regain their advantages. This is um, one hypothesis that, uh, that we have, but um, yeah. And it's nice to, to know that there are other speaks because you can concentrate when, when those speaks happens, so you can concentrate on those uh, when trying to detect vandalism X automatically. Thank you. Um, any more? Okay, we have one here. Do you know how many of the vandals were actually malicious versus the people who actually didn't know that they were doing anything wrong, sort of just came in there and thought that it's okay to do something like this? Yeah, uh, that happened uh, quite a few times. I, um, try to show that uh, because of lack of time I had to rush it. But exactly, yeah, uh, some of them didn't really know they were, uh, um, well, destructing, <laughs> des destroying things. So once they get approached, they, uh, um, yeah, eventually became constructive mappers. So um, you can look at the presentation afterwards, but there's one dialogue here where a um, um, person from the community says, okay, uh, correct that please, and the guy says, okay, sorry, I corrected that, and I'll next time uh, use this link as an instruction to map it correctly, and say, yeah, thank you. And so, so that happens a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm generalizing and calling everyone vandal here, but of course there are many different cases and many different motivations for people to provide false information. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Are there more questions? Oh, we have another. Uh, am I consider another? Okay, please, let me consider uh, a different person. I'm Thierry from Brazil. Oh. Uh, finally, what is your perception? Do you think that uh, Pokemon population and community is likely to provide good mappers for, for SM, or you are not very much uh, uh, enthusiastic, you are not enthusiastic at all about it? No, I am enthusiastic, I think, uh, and the community is enthusiastic as well, otherwise they wouldn't have put our OSM wiki dedicated especially to that. And uh, if you see the narrative on that, uh, on that page, it's, it's, uh, it goes in the direction, okay, uh, we've seen a bunch of you coming, so be welcome and just make sure that you map correctly. So that's my perception of it. And probably uh, the majority of Pokemon uh, mappers, I call it that way, is doing it's contributing actually, they are constructive mappers, but there, there are a few of them which uh, is actually destroying it, yeah. But here, you see our search string was Pokemon and then revert, reconstruct, uh, um, so um, probably if we have chosen another um, search string, we would detect those cases of constructive mapping related to Pokemon players, coming from Pokemon players. Okay. Okay, thank you. I will allow one more question and then we can close, please. So just a quick question again. Uh, so it seems like there's definitely a use case for a layer called Pokemon Go somewhere. And I don't think, like, I think people just want to take advantage of the great tools we have for OSM for their own specific cases. So uh, is there a recommendation how they can use them to build their own custom layers of things? 
Um, I'm not sure I, I got the question correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, could, you, could, you, could you repeat this? Please, can you? I think. You map, perhaps, as a layer, a custom layer on top of OpenStreetMap. Okay, I guess it's more of a comment than a question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, the question is answered. Thank you very much. Um, so um, let's give one one round of applause for um, Tessio.